welcome to my channel. My name is Natalia. This is Crafting with Natalia and here's another Flosture video. So <laughs> I know, I know. It's very soon. I think it's only been two weeks. Yes, it's actually been exactly two weeks since my last Flosture. So if you're new here, this is a channel about crafting, mainly about diamond painting and cross stitch. Um, and yes, who knows? <laughs> I mean, I'm into crafts and I think I keep discovering um, different things that I like still. Uh, so I'm not sure what else may uh, appear in this channel in the future. For now, it's mainly these two crafts. And um, and yes, if you're new or maybe if you're a diamond painter and you stumbled upon this video, and uh, this video is actually a floss tube, which means that it will be talking about cross stitch. Uh, so just in case if, if you weren't sure, um, but if you're interested in, in cross stitch then I hope that you will stay to watch this video. Um, it's just going to be a hopefully a short update, although I always say it and they're never really short because I talk too much. So because it's only been two weeks, I don't have a lot of things to show you in terms of like the progress that I have, but I feel like I have so many things to tell you guys. Um, that I actually, I because I'm always making such a mess of things and I always forget to say things that I wanted to, to say. And so I actually made some notes, okay? So I'm actually going to, to check and hopefully at least the notes will keep me right. <laughs> but also there's no guarantee that anything will keep me right. But, so, okay, so what should I say? So, what have I worked on since my last Fluffs Tube? Well, I've worked on, um, is it four projects? I think four projects, I'm not sure, maybe five. Let, let me see. So, yeah, so I'll just show you um, my whips. Uh, so, since last Fluffs Tube, I haven't started anything new, but I'm very, very, very tempted. <laughs> You know, guys, um, so I made this like um, the whole speech about, you know, thinking about not starting new things until I finish something. But th there is a problem with that is that I have so many, so many things that I want to start that it's really like it's really, really hard not to start anything new. But at least in the past two weeks, I haven't started anything new. OK, so so that's good. Um. I think last time when I was talking to you guys, I said that I will be working on my pigeons uh, from the cottage garden samplings and actually give me a second guys. Sorry guys, it's only the start and I'm already making a mess of this. Despite having notes, I'm, I'm still not prepared. <laughs> I completely forgot, forgot about my pigeons guys. Uh, although actually that brings me to the important point that I wanted to discuss. So first of all, this is the chart I'm talking about. Love is in the air by Cottage Garden Samplings. Okay, and so these are the two, well, I keep calling them pigeons, but probably I should be calling them doves. So one of my subscribers, uh, Sheila, uh, Sheila has actually pointed out to me where are they actually doves? And, and I think she's right. So I looked on Google because actually I wasn't sure what's the difference between pigeons and doves. Uh, so they so so they are similar and and so I think they're they're very closely related species. But yes, and uh, doves are a bit smaller, and I think the ones that usually um, that are like associated with love and and peace and all these nice things that they're, they're actually doves rather than pigeons. Uh, so I should probably be saying these are doves. <laughs> So, so my apologies. Uh, so these lovely two doves, and if I accidentally call them pigeons, <laughs> just just forgive me. I don't know why. I just really like calling them pigeons. But yes, they're doves. So these two lovely doves. I said last time that I was going to focus on this one, but also I mentioned to you that I made a wheel. Uh, that I was maybe going to try and spin, uh, and I put my not pigeons but doves on the wheel <laughs> and uh and i added a bit of um extra um so i have i made i have basically for those of you who didn't see my last video and have no idea what i'm talking about i downloaded an app uh where you can make your own kind of um like the the wheel you know used to have this television show where they would spin the wheel um, with questions or, or prizes i'm not sure i can't remember the, the details but basically you can make your own wheel uh which you can spin and then the slice that gets 
picked by the random random software basically says so spinning <laughs> I'm doing a terrible job of explaining this, but but that slice that gets picked uh, has a whip on it, and I can then so I can like basically my whip is asking uh, my my wheel is asking okay what are you going to stitch on today, and when it spins the slice gives me a whip which I can work on. And you can do multiple slices of the same thing, which then increases probability of actually pulling out one of the whips. So I, I'm kind of testing out the, the wheel idea because I had a problem that I felt like I'm abandoning some of my whips and, and it's like I'm not... I'm kind of struggling to decide what to work on because I have too many whips and I felt like to make it more equal for for all the for all my whips to be worked on uh, but at the same time to keep to my goals and my priorities um, I kind of designed a wheel where I've included all of my whips and the ones that I want to focus more uh, focus on the, the ones that I want to finish more quickly or that are very large projects I've added extra slices so that uh, so that there's more probability of pulling these whips and this is one of them just because I want to finish this one relatively quickly and um, because um, it's um, it's um, kind of it's suiting time because I recently got engaged and I just wanted to work on it and finish it quite quickly uh, so this one I added I think one or two slices um, of this one but it hasn't been pulled uh, so I think just after the last floss tube, I did some stitching on it, but very, very tiny amount of stitching. Uh, I think, if I remember correctly, last time when I showed you, and I can try and find a picture to insert here. Um, no, I'm not sure if this is actually true, but I think last time when I showed you this, I didn't have the outline of, of the tail of the first dove. <laughs> and now I've added, oh, let me just put something in the back here so i've added some of the outline here for for the tail of that first dove okay so i still don't really have the outline of the second dove and i'm still missing outlines of these feathers in the middle uh, but i have the full outside outline of one of the doves but that's really all that i managed to do on this project so that's why i actually forgot that i even worked on it because that was right after my last floss tube then what i did i didn't spin the wheel straight away uh, because i decided i wanted to come back to my heartfelt cell and just complete the next part so heartfelt stitch along uh, or cell is um is this lovely little stitch along where uh, which i think i think now we're on fourth month of the let me let me count actually yes yes so now i've completed the fourth part so so every month uh, one section of the cell is released okay and so uh, because i didn't want to fall behind on that cell uh, i decided that i was going to before i spin my wheel i was going to finish that next section of that whip so that then i can like put it away for another you know un until i decide to work on it again next month uh so so that i didn't have to worry that i was going to fall behind so i also worked on my heart heartfelt stitch along uh, for a few days and it's this one here so hopefully you can see it Sorry, I'm just using a, a cardboard envelope <laughs> as my board here, so very basic, okay? This channel is very basic, if you haven't noticed yet. It's a bit hectic, a bit chaotic. But there you go. I think it's looking quite nicely, actually. I'm, I'm sitting in a different location today. I was hoping maybe the light will be better here, and I'm actually quite happy. Um, actually, you know what? Last time when I showed you this, I was really unsure about the colors. I mean, I'm still not entirely sure. Um, because I'm stitching in my own colors, I've decided to change up quite a few colors and I, I'm kind of deciding as I go along what color I'm going to stitch next. I mean, I've got a few that I'm, you know, I'm not adding any new colors, I'm, I just have a few that I pick from, but I don't actually, I kind of decide as I go for each of these little motifs which colors they're going to be in. Um, but actually this month was the first month that I actually enjoyed stitching with my colors. Um, so, I mean, they, I think they look a little bit pale on the camera. They're a little bit brighter in real life. 
But actually, I really enjoyed that middle, uh, stitching that middle section. And I think it's actually not as bad as I thought last time that it is. Like, I, I think... Sorry, the light is being a bit funny. But I think the greens are looking quite lovely. And the pinks... Um, actually, I quite like it now. <laughs> it's a really cute design. And it's a cell, which is... Um, it's a charity cell um, where the... The funds raised from this chart, well, for donations, because it's actually a free chart, uh, but donations from this chart are, are raised for the Make-A-Wish Foundation, um, which funds dreams, well, dreams for, for children with illnesses, either chronic or, or terminal illnesses. Uh, so, um, you know, so it's a beautiful cause. Uh, so I wanted to to stitch um, stitch along um, with that in mind, and I think it's actually looking much better this month. So I'm much happier with this than I was last month. Okay, so or two weeks ago because that was actually still in May, but I didn't have the May part yet. Okay, so that was the one thing that I, st I worked on, and then finally I spun spun my wheel <laughs> wheel of fortune, and. Um, I think that's what the show was, wasn't it? And, and well, I used to watch it in Poland when I was I was very small, so I don't remember any of it. But I think it was called the Wheel of Fortune, and there was a guy that was like spinning the wheel. But I can't remember what was the outcome of spinning the wheel. But anyway, <laughs> this is completely random. <laughs> but anyway, um, what well, I was going to say something. Oh yes, so I spun the wheel. And uh, I did it, I'm not sure if I did it every day, because I'm not sure if I actually stitched every day. Uh, so of course, if I'm not planning on stitching that day, then I'm not going to spin the wheel. Um, and once, and I think actually, I was very lucky that uh, what, I, what I had in mind to stitch actually came out on my wheel. <laughs> so maybe there's like some mind power, you know, that I'm like, I'm thinking about it so hard that actually I'm making the wheel come out with, with the with the projects that I wanted to work on but so one thing that I really wanted to work on is my Mary Amelia's bird um, from Queen's Rose Needle Arts I think that's the name yes yes I think so and by the way all of the charts or designers or floss tubers or any, or shops anything that I mention I will try and link them or at least mention them on uh, the names in the description below uh, so that in case if, if I forget to say something or if my pronunciation is horrible because it usually is horrible uh, then you can <laughs> scroll down and you can find it in the description box um, if, in case you would like to check them out. But so Mary Amelia's bird is actually a cell. Um, well, it's not a cell. So, so basically, it's a fairly new design from from a fairly new designer uh, who's also a floss tuber here on YouTube. Uh, so Quaint Rose Needle Arts is a it's also a shop on Etsy, and in that shop you can buy this chart. Um, I will insert a picture here of what it should look like when it's finished. But it's this cute little bird. It's a reproduction uh, of. Uh, of a stitchy, stitchy, <laughs> of a, of a, st I don't know, is, is it a sampler? It's not really a sampler, so it's a reproduction of a, of a, of stitching <laughs> from, from, I'm not sure, I think we don't have a date for when this was stitched, but, um, you know, may, maybe last century or beginning of this, of, well, definitely not, not this century, but so, so maybe like end of 19th or beginning of 20th century, I'm not sure. But anyway, um, maybe more. I don't <laughs> I'm completely making this up. Anyway, it's an old thing that was um, that um, I can't remember the lady's name from Queen Queen Rose Needle Arts. I'm really bad. I always, I, you know, I think it's the camera effect. Whenever I'm on camera, I forget everything. Honestly, names, numbers. It's just it's like all blending together. Uh, but she 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 designed this reproduction of of this uh, beautiful piece, and there's also a style well a style there's a hashtag on Instagram for people who are stitching this bird. I think it's uh, Mary Mary Amelia's bird style, uh, but I'll try and put the hashtag on the screen or at least in the description below uh, for you to see. And so. Um, let me just... Oh, and that reminds me, that reminds me... That was in my notes. See, I, I'm not looking at my notes. I'm not looking at my notes at all. And, and I'm already doing a really bad job. So let me just... Um, before I show you this one, uh, let me just come back to, to one thing. Um, because I haven't told you what fabrics I'm stitching on. 
okay i'm really bad at these things i don't say i don't give you the information guys that you need okay but so one thing the 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 doves <laughs> were stitched on a 32 count murano okay 32 count murano and um this is I think this is dark blue. Um, we already had this discussion last time and, and um, I checked on, on my order from eBay and there was even a number next to it. So I will, I will again, I will put it either on the screen or in the description below for you to see what color. I, I just ordered from eBay, so I'm not sure if you're in a different country or you're buying from a different seller and maybe called something else. I'm not sure, but this is Murano 32 count. And what I wanted to say, which I have in my notes, because because I meant to say it last time and I forgot and, and I, I never say it. But in the previous, previous floss tube, one of the comments, um, one of my viewers asked me, could I please say, um, you know, give information whether I'm stitching one over one or one over two. And, and of course, I didn't do it last time because I, I forgot. But anyway, I did respond in, in, the, in the comment at least. So because because in general even if i don't say it you can assume you can assume if i'm stitching on linen or even weave pretty much i i will tell you i will definitely tell you if it's different um because pretty much most of my projects and my favorite way to stitch is always going to be two over two okay yes two over two so two strands of floss over two holes <laughs> keeping over one hole yes so 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 yes so the big big squares um yes if i'm ever to stitch with one strand of floss please believe me i'm going to tell you because i really really don't like stitching with one strand of floss but sometimes sometimes you have to uh you know so for effect or for depending on the fabric count um but i really i'm not a fan of stitching with one strand of floss so i will make a point of it when i'm stitching with two strands of floss i'm happy so i generally don't talk about it <laughs> But you can assume also if I'm stitching over one uh, on even weave or linen, I will also probably not be very happy. So I will also probably um, tell you about that as well. So so that's just just a note for you to know that if I don't say it, it's probably going to be two over two, right? On on even weave or linen versus um, of course Ada. Everybody does the same thing. I'm pretty, I'm quite sure you know on Ada we all stitch. Um, two over one really right i don't know maybe sometimes one over one over one but uh, for me i again i like two strands so it's two over one yes and this is 18 count just white ada okay so now that i've given you this information let's come back to mary amelia's bird uh which is such a lovely project and why i really wanted to work on it is because it's a gift for someone and because that person has been really really supportive to me um and really she saved me um in a way because um i'm ha i'm going kind of through a very stressful period at work there's been lots of lots of drama and, and um in general i got a bit stressed with what kind of um there's been lots of things going on and and i don't know uh I mean, I don't want to kind of discuss work here, but one thing to say, there is one person who has been there for me, has been super supportive and, and she's a wonderful person and, and she's been through a lot in her own life. Uh, um, she, she's got her own story um, and, and yet she has so much kindness uh, and, and so much support for me. So, uh, so as a thank you, I wanted to stitch something for her and I've been stitching this bird and I really want to because she's been so kind to me lately I really want to finish this and give it to her as soon as I can so I was thinking actually I think even before I spun the wheel I think I spent an evening uh, working on this on this Mary Amelia's bird and then I spun the wheel and twice it came up in one week so so but I did increase the again I added some slices so I was expecting it to come up more often than other projects but luckily it came out this week um, so, so I did manage to make some progress. Um, now I will try and insert a picture here of what it looked last time. Okay. Um, and so here we go. So this is what it is now. Okay. So, sorry. 
this is going well. But so hopefully I will try and put them side by side. So here where my elbow is, so it should be a picture of last time and this is what it is now. Um, hopefully you can see it quite well. Okay, uh, so also what I will do, so I kind of reverted today to my old way of floss tubing and compared to the last video, um, partially because I have time today to and also because it's a short update with less projects, so it didn't take me as much time to prepare. So I did pre-record some short videos of, of these um, projects that I wanted to show you in more detail. Um, because my front camera is a little bit not so great at focusing, so if I bring this closer to you, it's probably going to get blurry. Although, I don't know, today I think it's doing a better job. Maybe the light here is just better. I think this is actually doing a better job than usual. But anyway, I can insert, because I pre-recorded it, a little video here uh, for you to see also with my back camera, just to see the project in more detail. Um, but I'm very, very happy with this project. It's honestly, um, it's making me happy. Uh, I love birds. And uh, this is, I don't know, there's something really, really sweet. Um, I think that the girl who stitched it originally, she was like eight years old when she stitched it. And I don't know, there's something very sweet and cute about this design and about how it's turning out um i love the colors um they're not all called for colors um because i was stitching from stash and also because sorry about the noise <laughs> but also because i wanted to make um what do i want to say now i got distracted oh, i wanted to make some of the colors brighter uh, as well so or or some colors I didn't have, so I just replaced them for the colors that I liked. Um, but a lot of them are the ones that are called for, and they're all DMCs. Um, so as well, you can assume I usually stitch with DMCs unless I say otherwise. Um, what else? I feel... Well, it's stitched on... Oh, I remember. It's stitched on um, Belfast Linen Cream. I think it's cream slash ivory. I don't so I don't know which, if it's the same thing or but I think on again it's from eBay uh, but I think it's cream slash ivory Belfast 32 count I love this fabric uh, I'm I, so I like I really like stitching on 32 count but I really like stitching on this specific linen the Belfast linen um again it's making me happy <laughs> so so um yeah so that's all I wanted to say. I don't know. And again, it's two over two. Yes. Um, need a reminder. Um, you, you must be sick of this one because I show it like literally in, in my every video. But I know people really love this needle minder and I, I was asked about it before. So just in case if you're new, this is from Just So Heavenly. And I will again put, um, put the name of that shop below in the description. Okay. Am I forgetting something? Should I look at my notes, guys? But I don't know if I even have this in my notes because I <laughs> I wrote my notes. Oh, there, there, there. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I knew there was something I wanted to say. Okay, so another lovely, um, lovely subscriber of, of mine um, and, and viewer of my Flosture videos uh, is Tanya. And Tanya has been emailing me and I love reading her emails. It's so fun. It's it's so great, guys, when you reach out to me, when you either comment or if, if you send me emails and you share. So, so Tanya has been sharing her cross stitch with me and be commenting on my videos and, and my cross stitch. And we've just been having some discussions. Um, you know, it's so great to hear from you guys when you do that. So Tanya uh, asked me what bird this is, or or she she or she kind of asked if, if if I know what bird it is, and and she suggested um if it's bullfinch I think, um and guys I don't know, <laughs> so if you are if you are a bird person if you if like in, you know because I'm a bird person but I don't know the names of the birds I just like looking at them and listening to them sing but I don't really know a lot about them and about the different species as you see I didn't even know the difference between the doves and the pigeons but so if you are a bird person and if you have any suggestions as to what bird this is I'd be really really interested to 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 hear your opinion Okay, so so please let me know if you have any idea what bird this is. Uh, <laughs> then maybe we can answer Tanya's question because I'm not quite sure myself. I tried in Google 
birds with red bellies and and but then also it's got like blue head and blue tail and i couldn't find a bird like that so i kind of gave up um but maybe maybe i wasn't looking right and then maybe you know what bird it is so my, maybe it's not a you know maybe the girl who was stitching it she didn't have a specific bird maybe she was just stitching her own bird so maybe it's not a specific species of bird i don't know so let me know if you guys know okay um okay so so i think that's it with the ornithology section of my clothes too <laughs> all right i don't know this video feels like fun i'm really enjoying this video guys i hope you are enjoying it too <laughs> otherwise it's just me enjoying recording myself which is really strange okay <clears throat> losing my voice but we still have a few things to get through so, so then my, my, okay, so this is something that I haven't mentioned to you last time, uh, partially because I forgot and partially because I wasn't sure if I should mention it or not, because it's kind of embarrassing. But, but then Chris Crossstitch, um, well, I call him Chris Crossstitch. I'm not sure if this is actually how you call his channel. Uh, Chris X, X Stitch. Um, no, X. <laughs> I'll put his channel name here because I watch him every week and I still don't know what his channel name is. So, so. <laughs> but Chris just had his 50th and no, what 50th floss tube um for his first anniversary anniversary, so first floss floss anniversary or whatever you call it. So he's been one year on floss tube and he was celebrating it. And he started a sal, uh, which has a lovely story behind it, which I'm not going to try and repeat because I'm I'm not a great storyteller. Uh, Chris is a great storyteller, so you should really watch his uh, watch his channel if you enjoy stories, um, because he's got some great stories. Uh, he's probably gonna make you cry at some point, um, but also there's a lot of funny stories as well. But so he started a sal um which is called mary will sal okay and it's and it's kind of in a memory of an important person mary will was an important person in chris's life and one of his viewers designed uh, some daffodil charts um so so this is again this is like a charity sal uh, so the the pro the the kind of the, the funds raised uh through this sal uh, will be donated to um, oh, what's the the charity called? It's my notes are very incomplete. Uh, it's someone's imagination library. <laughs> Please watch Chris's channel if if you are interested in joining that cell or or donating um in that cause. It's a charity which funds books for kids. Uh, so then um for a given amount. Of, of, for a given donation that will then fund a book to be given to a, a child uh, so it's a beautiful foundation as well um, I think books are very important um, you know I used to read a lot when I was a kid I was a very geeky kid but I was very lucky in um, being raised by uh, my parents are very open-minded people and, and they they really they love literature and they, they love learning about the world and they always try to pass it on to me so i was always surrounded by books okay and i started reading when i was very very small and uh and uh, i think I, I started as soon as i learned how to read um i started you know first reading children's books but then i would just grab the books that were on the shelves and some of them were way too mature for me at my age when i was reading them but i was still trying to read them and i think it's it's definitely helped me to develop um my brain in some ways like like you know to to develop being able to use language and and write and read and and communicate although you may not hear it because my my speak my spoken communication is terrible but i can write quite well and but anyway i think it also really helps you develop your imagination and just your understanding of the world because you read about the different different people from different backgrounds from different countries uh, different kind of problems so so you really develop your understanding of the world so i think it's very important for kids to um to have that opportunity, you know, to, to read. And especially in today's society, I, I think we are kind of forgetting about books a little bit because everything's on the internet, right? Uh, but I think good old fashioned books um, have a lot of value to them. 
so well that aside i just i really like the cause as well of that uh fundraising um but anyway i i wasn't planning on stitching one you know another new chart from from chris's uh, daffodils um but i actually already had something daffodil that i was stitching myself and i thought oh this is a nice coincidence i haven't shown it to you guys because um as i said it's kind of embarrassing because i i don't know if i i, I think i mentioned it very briefly that um, I kind of started experimenting a little bit, um, learning how to draw and experimenting with some some paints and some watercolor pencils and it's just another hobby that I kind of picked up. I'm trying to learn some, some new things and, and something more artsy, something more creative that maybe one day I could draw something or maybe one day I could design a cross stitch chart or something like that. And as I was drawing I think it was in spring when I started all this and I, I really love daffodils. So I was making a lot of attempts at, at drawing and painting daffodils with um, kind of moderate success, but because they, they turned out to be really hard to draw or paint. Um, but I tried <laughs> and after all this, I, I thought, well, how about trying to stitch a daffodil? And that was at the time when I was working on my Biscorn new, which I showed in my last floss tube. So if you're interested in that, please go and watch my last floss tube. Uh, I have a playlist of all, all my floss tube videos as well, in, because I know I have lots of diamond painting videos. So in case if you'd like to just filter for the floss tube videos, there is a playlist out there of all of them. But so... So my base cornu that I completed last time kind of inspired me. I thought, well, it would be really nice, like, if I wanted to try and stitch something of my own. Um, you know, base cornus are like really small because you just have like a square and then it's repetitive. So you, so you kind of you do the same thing um, in kind of with four corners or how whatever the design is, but it's kind of it's symmetrical. So. I thought, well, how about like trying to make like a little daffodil biscorn new? But well, then I tried. <laughs> then I tried, and and my first two attempts were were very not good. Then I had a third attempt, but I'm I'm not sure if that's any good either. But I kind of I'm, I kept going with this a little bit. So I have one daffodil. <laughs> I don't want to show you guys. It's embarrassing, but I'll just show you, okay? And I picked that green fabric in the end because i started on a different fabric and it really wasn't working out for me and then i had this green fabric that i bought a while ago with something else in mind which now i don't really want to stitch so i have this green fabric that i don't really, really know what to do so i thought why don't i put my spring daffodil on a spring green fabric and i'm not sure if it's the best choice because it's kind of the yellow is blending of the green a little bit but anyway here's my daffodil okay after all this intro, and now again my camera's playing up. My, maybe that's for the better. <laughs> but so, so my daffodil, I don't think it's looking very good on here. It's it's a little bit better in real life than in my. I may try. Oh, there it is. There it is. Now it's focused a little bit more when it's further away. But so yeah, so you can see it's it's kind of it's hard to see it on this green fabric maybe. Uh, and I have idea of doing like a. This daffodil here will be slightly different and then they will be repeating so, so this daffodil here will be the same as this one and then this one will be the same as this one um, But so, so I have like a little sketch in my iPad um, basically of what, what this should look like um, But it's not as easy when, when you try and actually stitch it uh, So I've been struggling a little bit and I've put some, I may try and insert a little picture here um, Just for you to see what it looks like um, you know, maybe, maybe this camera is maybe this is not really showing very well on here, uh, but there's also some beads here in the middle, just because daffodils have these little bits um, in the middle as well. Uh, so maybe it's a little bit silly, but it's just something I was I was kind of doing for myself. I was just trying to see what it's like to stitch something from your own, like trying to. So I was kind of trying to design it on my iPad and then trying to see what it would look like when I put it on fabric. And I had to, like, again, this is my third attempt, so, so I've got a long way to learn, uh, but I think you have to start somewhere, right? So this is just, like, experimental kind of thing. But I thought it fits nicely with Chris's sal, so I thought, okay, why don't I um, use this as my daffodil chart for um, for Mary Will's sal? Uh, and that way I can also stitch along with other people um, doing daffodils. Um, but yeah, but it's just it's just a silly little thing. Okay. 
So that that took a long long time explaining uh, for something that's really not very impressive. But hey, here we go. This is something you know. So at least you know that I'm working on something as well. Um, you know, <laughs> because the new thing. What has she been doing all this time? But I'm I'm also you know trying new things as well, and they're not always successful, but they take time. <laughs> Okay, anyway, anyway, moving on uh, from this embarrassment. Uh, two more things I worked on, okay? So one thing, one thing that I was really excited to come back to is a whip that I haven't worked on for a very long time, okay? It's actually something that I started, it's actually something quite small, that I started, I think, at the end of summer last year. Uh, and then I put it away and I never came back to it uh, and it literally doesn't need that much stitching to be finished so this is something that I'm hoping to have finished very soon um, but of course that depends as well on my wheel of fortune and then what other things I stitch on uh, but this is um, the molecular model from uh, the steady thread okay so I'll try and insert a picture here of what it should look like when it's finished um, and give me a second guys because I forgot something sorry about that I had a little prop and I forgot to bring it here <laughs> but uh, so yes yeah, so this is molecular model and this is actually black work um, which I'm actually stitching in white thread so in my case I don't think it can be called black work but but that's the idea behind it but the molecular model why am I stitching this particular design is because I have two degrees in chemistry. Uh, I actually have a, a PhD in chemistry. So, um, you know, I, I do like geeky things and I saw that and they have three different options. One small, this is called the medium molecular model and then they have a large one. Um, so, so really the small one is, is a molecule of methane, so, so just in case if you're interested, <laughs> I doubt anybody will be, but, but they didn't give them names. Uh, but the one that I'm stitching is a medium one that's actually a molecule, molecule of ethane. And uh, if anybody is, <laughs> this is a very geeky insert, but this is, <laughs> this is what it looks like. Uh, when it's not stitched, so this is why I'm stitching. Um, so it's kind of. I hope you can see this all right on the on the white background. Um, but so so this is a molecular model of ethane, and basically these two middle balls are two carbon atoms, and then you have all these white balls around it are hydrogen atoms. Just in case if you're curious, and you can rotate it, so it's completely rotatable. So that's why these can be in any kind of orientation like this. Um, but anyway, so, so this is what I'm stitching. Um, and so far I have my two carbon atoms, so the two in the middle finished. And let me just put my cardboard here, so that, there we go. So two carbon atoms in the middle are done, okay. And then here I've got two hydrogens done as well. And I'm still missing these four hydrogens there. But this is what I have. And I think it's looking super cool. I'm really, really excited actually about this one. Because I think, again, I put it away because I wasn't convinced about it. And now I pulled it back out. And I was like, oh, I actually really, really like it. <laughs> so I think now that I've completed, I think I completed this one and this one. And I just really love how this is looking. Okay, so... Uh, so I really want to keep stitching on it, so I hope that um, I will get a chance. Uh, I mean, if I really, really... So, so I hope it will come up on my wheel. Uh, but if it doesn't, then again, I will pull it out. Um, because it it doesn't... It won't take long to finish. Like, every, every one of these balls maybe takes, like, I don't know, an hour and a half to finish. So really, this is just a few hours stitching left and I'll be done. Uh, so I'd really like to actually try and finish it as soon as possible Because because the more finishes I have the more new stars I can have right? <laughs> But anyway, sorry guys, I, I got too excited. I knocked my camera But one last thing I worked on I can't believe we're 36 minutes in. I told you I was gonna talk a lot, right? But hey ho, hopefully you're still there. Hopefully you're still enjoying this video so the last thing I worked on got um, called by my wheel yesterday and I kept today I didn't um, 
turn the spin the wheel. Uh, I just kept working on this because I had a bit of a disaster last night, right? So I spent like an hour stitching on this. Well, no, so yes, yes. So I, <laughs> so I spent an hour stitching on this. And then I think like, yeah, after that hour, I realized that everything I was stitching on was wrong because this is a project I worked on last month. I think I worked on it in April and then I put it aside. And it turns out that I made an error back in April and I didn't check it now. I just pulled it out and I kept stitching on what I had. And then after an hour, I realized this is all wrong. And I had an error from last month. So I had to rip out everything I stitched on that through that hour and then uh, like a little bit of the April stitching as well. So I was like, okay, this is going great. So after I ripped it all out, then of course I had to restitch it. So last night I felt like I wasted that the whole evening. <laughs> <laughs> so this morning I got up, I was like, okay, now today I'm going to do some more stitching on this because I'm really not happy with how I left things last night. Uh, so that's why I didn't spin the wheel today. But so, um, so what I'm talking about, the project is the watercolor, um, let, me, let me see if I have in my notebook, if I have written what it's actually called, watercolor heart with flowers and birds by the little room in the attic. And I'll straight away tell you that this is stitched on 32 count Murano, uh, so, so an even weave, uh, in lilac, okay? And so, um, and this is stitched all in DMCs as well. And so I'll try and insert here what it should look like um, when it's finished. And um, what else? I'll, I may try and find a picture from last time, uh, like where I was last time, and put it here as well now. And now I will try and show you what I have today. And again, I need to actually pick my cardboard. Okay, so, and this is my big, big needle minder. I can't remember if this is, so again, almost all my needle minders are either from Just So Heavenly or Denkai Design. So it's going to be from one of these two shops. Um, and so this is where I am today. Again, I can try and put it side by side with uh, where I was last time. So I'm not sure how much you can see, but basically what I managed to do is stitch up this whole big pink flower. And that's why I had an error, so, so that's why I stitched half of the flower and then I had to pull it all out. Um, but now I've completed the flower. I'm still missing, there's a couple of green leaves going here, I'm still missing them. And then after that I do them, then I can go on, there's another big pink flower here. And like a yellow flower here and some other green bits uh, and then there's a hummingbird going here so I need to stitch that as well I will try and insert a picture um, or a video I think I recorded a little video of this as well uh, for you to see what it looks like with my back camera which again is a little bit more detailed and also the Sun has gone away now so so I think the lighting is getting worse but hopefully you can still see it. I mean, right now it still doesn't have backstitch on. So there's uh, quite a lot of backstitch there in different colors that will go on top of this uh, cross stitching. Uh, so right now it's still a little bit kind of blurry, right? It's, it's, you can't see all the details. I think it really needs the backstitch to really bring out the details of the flowers and the leaves and connect the different bits together. So, but, um, but for this, I will only do the backstitch at the very end. Uh, when I'm done with this whole heart. So I'll do all the cross stitching first and then do the back stitch. I don't know if there's anything else to say about this. I don't think I have any notes about this because I only spun the wheel about this uh, yesterday so I didn't even know that I was going to be talking about this. So I think in terms of my whips I think this is everything I wanted to tell you. I think so. Okay. Um, I've been buying a lot of charts lately, guys. <laughs> and there's one that I, well, no, there's several, several charts I really, really want to start. And I already had like a million that I wanted to start. So now I have even more. Um, some charts that I really want to stitch. Um, well, the one not as urgently, but I also bought it. Uh, and one, I really, really want to stitch it. Um, uh, so, so the new releases from Kathy Barrick, I mentioned, I think, previously that um, Nashville Markets um, 
so there were there were I think three designers that I really really loved their new releases. There was Teresa Cogut, and there was Kathy Barrick and Hello from Liz Matthews. Uh, I love their releases, and so um, they they are now so at least Kathy Barrick's ones uh, are now available on Patchwork Rabbit, and also on um, Peak Sight uh, Needle Works or Needle Art. I don't know which one it is. It's a bit confusing because we ha we have no we have Lakeside Needle Crafts and then we have Peakside Needle Works I think so on Peakside you can find these charts as well as the Liz Matthews charts but I haven't bought the Liz Matthews yet um, they're in in my wish they're on my wish list um, with along with some other charts <laughs> but I'm trying to control myself <laughs> really badly but anyway so I bought the two new releases from uh, Kathy Barrick um, so one is the bluebird in the cherry tree uh, which I think is lovely I'm not sure if you can see it well um, and the, there's two so there's also this little version and, and this one has a little crown on top and, and I actually thought I would maybe stitch the big one with the crown and uh, and I, I saw so so you can see there's a video on her, hello from Liz Matthews um, she has a floss tube channel and uh, together so Kathy Barrick is, her, is Liz Matthews mom and so together with her mom they whenever they have new releases for markets they make like a video together these videos are great honestly i love them and they're so fun to watch and their designs are so beautiful and they they show like model uh, stitches uh, of these designs so they look beautiful on the videos and i want to stitch them all really but but this one looked beautiful but uh, she showed also that the little pillow that version and actually for this pillow she said that she picked better colors and I think she was right. I, I think for this pillow that the colors were brighter. So I'd like to use the colors from, from that pillow on, on the main design uh, and also stitch the crown on the bird. But that's, that's something that I'm not like urgently, that will be in the future. Like I'm not going to start it anytime soon, I think. But another um, another new release from Kathy Barrick. Um, it's just, I, I saw the model stitch of it and it was so beautiful that I was like, oh, I really, really want to stitch this. However, there's again two versions of what you can stitch. Uh, so so the, the chart I'm talking about is the Moons of 2022. Okay. And so this is the big version, which lists all of the moon names for every month of the year. Uh, however, there's a smaller version of this chart, uh, which basically doesn't include the, the names of the moons. It includes the top part and the bottom part of the chart put together. Um, however, I also really, really like these bits. And I thought, could I include them in the smaller chart? So stitching the smaller chart, but on the sides of it, I think I would like to include these border uh, parts because I really like them. Uh, so I think I'd like to stitch that and uh, I'm really uh, I'd really like to start that sometime soon but, the, but there's multiple other charts I'd love to start sometime soon and um, something that was just released um, I think last week or the week before last uh, it's actually from a Ukrainian designer and I know a lot of people have been stitching designs um, from Ukrainian designers just to support them because um, there's one way to support them is just to buy their charts because they keep designing in these very difficult circumstances. Um, a lot of them are still in Ukraine and still, uh, you know, in hiding or, you know, kind of in their safe, safe space. They, they don't always have access to internet, but when they do, uh, they, they quite often post updates on Instagram and they re release new charts in their shops still in their Etsy stores. And so um, I, I've been meaning to, um, to buy um, uh, you know, some charts from Ukrainian designers, but the thing is, there's so many lovely ones and I couldn't decide which one to buy. And then this one was released and I was like, oh, I love this chart. Uh, so this is from, uh, from a shop called Nonstop Stitch uh, on Etsy. And uh, this new chart is a uh, rooster. Uh, in I think it's called rooster and poppies and I'll insert the picture here of what it looks like and I like stitch I, I really like hens and roosters and I, I don't know why <laughs> you know when I was a child um, I went to the zoo with my parents and <laughs> and 
and my dad got really upset about this because at the end of the trip to the zoo where there was lots of different animals like you know all kinds of animals we came out of the zoo and my dad asked me so what was your favorite animal and I said it was hens <laughs> and I don't ask me why <laughs> but I said hens and so, and, and my dad, he really doesn't like hens, so it really was a big disappointment for him. Especially that he probably spent a fair bit of money on the tickets to the zoo. <laughs> um, but, um, but yeah, I like hens and, and roosters, and I like stitching them. One, like, I think my biggest finish to date, I think it was the biggest finish to date, uh, was actually a hens and rooster design from Marika. Um, I'll see if I can dig out a picture to insert here what it was. It was a gift. Um, we used to have hens at the, uh, in Cambridge when, where I lived in a house in Cambridge. Um, and um, they made a lot of noise and we had roosters that would um, make the, the sound in the morning. What do you call it in, in English? Oh, I don't know. In Polish we say kukuriku. It's the, 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 the sound that they make. Um, but I don't know what you say in English. There's something, cock a dee no, I, I don't know. <laughs> you guys tell me what, what sounds roosters make in the morning. <laughs> but so anyway, so I made this, I stitched that design uh, for the owners of the house when I was leaving. And I really, really enjoyed stitching that. And I saw this design and I thought, oh, I'd love to stitch this rooster. It's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful with the flowers and stuff. It's a big design, so it would take me a while. But I, I'd love to start it as well at some point. Just uh, and, and there's a hashtag, I think, stitching for Ukraine uh, on Instagram, where you can post um, any designs that you stitch um, you know, to support the Ukrainian designers. Um, yeah. I don't know if I, uh, there was anything else. Oh yeah, and well, but there's another thing that I'd like to stitch on. So well, there's so many others, so many others. Um, but I know that um, in summer, um, Chris Cross Stitch will be doing also, um, I watch a lot of Chris Cross Stitch, but uh, I love also the things that he stitches on. So so I always want to stitch, oh, I want to stitch this as well. Or so he has lots of ideas for s stitch alongs and, and uh, start alongs and things like that. Uh, so I know that in the summer there will be a spooky summer stitch and I'd love to take part in that one as well. So spooky summer stitch, the idea is just that you, you stitch something Halloween-y in the summer. And I've never actually stitched anything Halloween-y because, um, well, first of all, I'm quite new to cross stitch. Um, but uh, also because I'm not a very Halloween-y person because um, in Poland we don't have Halloween at all. And even here, I don't really celebrate Halloween. I mean, I've been to some Halloween parties a couple of times, but that's about it. Um, but, um, you know, I've seen all these different Halloween charts and some of them are really, really cute. Some of them look really, really fun. And one chart that I really liked um, is from Jardin Privé. Jardin Privé? I'm not sure. They're the French French company. And so the lovely lady from Jardin... Jardin... <laughs> <laughs> this company <laughs> and the lovely lady whoever I don't know what her name is Natalie apparently your name is Natalie as well okay well I'm Natalia she's Natalie great okay so she I placed an order with her and she sent me a paper chart and also I ordered straight away um, some fabric from her and also I ordered um, DMC uh, threads so the original design for this chart is in black and white and it's this one. But when you go on the Jardin Privé's <laughs> website, you can see a version of this stitched uh, with, um, so in black, but with oranges, um, kind of like in her hair and in different motifs. And I really love that specific version. So when I, when I went on the website, um, I saw that actually in the description under the pictures, uh, she says what DMC floss colors are needed to stitch it in that version with the orange. And since I was already there and she had DMC floss on there, I ordered that floss from the website. And um, so she sent me the floss on a, it came straight, it didn't come in a skein, it came like this. Okay, so there's basically, so we have black and we have these two shades, um, kind of browny, browny orange. Uh, so it's 920 and 3853. 
But so she, because she saw me ordering that floss, um, I guess she must have... Um, so, so she realized that I wanted to probably stitch this design as, as it is with the oranges. Um, and so she also, especially for me, she sent me a chart rather than in black and, um, black and white. She sent me a chart with the orange in it already so that I don't have to work it back from the website. I could just, um, you know, it already, the chart is already printed with orange, um, orange motifs. So I thought that was very, very sweet of her to do that because I didn't request it and she, she spotted that that's what I wanted to stitch. So that was brilliant customer service. It arrived from France um, in a couple of days. It was super quick. Um, so I'm in the UK, but it, it was actually quicker than a lot of UK based shops. So I was very impressed with the service. And so I'd like to stitch it at some point in summer for the spooky summer stitch. Um, so so I think that would be really, really fun design. I'll try and insert a picture of that um, version with the orange in it uh, for you guys to see as well. I'm really losing my voice, by the way, so I have to finish soon. Um, but also to go with my Halloween stitch, um, the, the spooky summer stitch, I also ordered from Caterpillar Cross Stitch. I ordered, they have a... Uh, so they have their own Halloween style and I think Chris is going to be stitching, um, which I'm, I'm not going to be stitching that one, but I ordered a needle minder from them that uh, is, is meant to go with that Halloween style from Caterpillar Cross Stitch and is that lovely black cat. And I thought that would um, be a really lovely needle minder to use in my uh, spooky summer stitch. I think there's a black cat in my design as well, uh, so it will work really well. Okay. So I've got that. Um, and so last thing, but not the least. <laughs> this is something for those of you. So I, you know, the people who have managed to make it this far in the video are, are my most faithful <laughs> viewers and subscribers. <laughs> and I love you guys so, so very much for being here. Um, but so 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 I kind of, I forgot I actually forgot to mention it in the beginning of the video. I don't know if I may hint at it in the description of the video just just to give people some idea that this is coming. But I actually forgot I was going to do this. But I've been thinking um that I would really really love to um say thank you to to those of you who keep watching me. <laughs> I'm not sure how many people actually make it to that this part of the video because it's 54 minutes now uh, so it's a long time or actually maybe more because I stopped it and started so actually it's probably like 60 minutes now so wow okay but so I've got um, I've got a couple of charts um, from cottage gardening samplings that I I bought thinking that maybe I could do like a little giveaway or maybe actually even two giveaways um, so, so, you know, maybe two people could win a chart. It's a small chart, um, but you know, it's just a little uh, saying thank you from me for you guys um, that are watching still. Um, so if you would like to be, uh, well, first of all, what's on offer? What's on offer? So I mentioned last time uh, when I was talking about cottage garden samplings, that they have these, um, this series this year. Uh, every month there's a, a different animal and with a little cottage in the background. And the, the actual series, I couldn't remember last time, but it's called the A Year in the Woods. And there's been some lovely charts being released for that series. And I, I know that it's very, very popular. So I, I hope that maybe someone who's watching here would like one of the charts from the series. Um, I bought two thinking about you guys and um, I'm not sure but but if you don't like it we, we can always you know if nobody wants them I, because I don't have that many viewers <laughs> I don't know how many people are watching and if you like it but if not we can always move it to next time but I have two charts so uh, one is the bear which is one of the, the I think the previous month's one is the bear and he's grabbing his toes so he's very very cute I hope you can see him okay uh, so so if you if you would like to be entered for the bear all you need to do is in the comments say bear b-e-a-r right and just include that word in your comment okay 
Um, and there's a second one, which is this one. And I think this one's super cute. I love this one. Uh, so this is the raccoon. Okay. So again, same same idea. If you would like to be entered for the raccoon, uh, just type in raccoon, as spelled here, in the comments. Uh, and I will use a random comment picker um, to pick a winner. And that will be probably, you know, uh, I, I can't say when I will record the next floss tube. But I was thinking that probably my next video will actually be a whip parade. And I will not be drawing winners uh, on that video. Uh, so the video after that uh, will be my next floss tube. So it may even be like a month from now. I'm not sure. Uh, but so so I will wait um, to see how many comments I have. Um, and just before I record Dagnet's floss tube, I will um, use a random comment picker um, to pick a winner. I am happy to ship these anywhere in the world because they're just small charts so I can very easily put them in an envelope and send them anywhere in the world. Um, so I hope you like them. Um, we don't have raccoons in Poland I mean, or the UK. I don't think we have raccoons in the UK. <laughs> I don't think so. Uh, but we have bears in Poland and um, they are, you know, they're kind of one of these um, Polish famous animals. We have them in the mountains. Um, and um, I don't know, I like bears and this one, the raccoon was very cute as well. Uh, so I thought there would be nice giveaways. I'm not sure how many people will actually watch this video. So maybe, um, maybe nobody will want the charts because I don't have that many viewers. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I hope that maybe someone, one of you guys that have been watching my channel and have been subscribing can get a little something from me. Um, just as a little thank you for watching and for being here. Um, if my channel ever gets bigger, if I if my floss tube ever gets bigger and, and I have more viewers, then I would want to do more of these kind of small giveaways. Um, but of course, I don't know um, because um, yeah, you know, <laughs> it's hard to say where where this channel will go. Uh, but um, it's definitely something that I would like to do in the future. And now I've literally completely lost my voice and we really passed an hour now on my short update. <laughs> so I think this is time to end this video. I'm sure I forgot something, although actually looking at my, at my uh, nose, I think I said most of the things I wanted to say. And next time I can mention the ones that I didn't mention today. And I'm sure there'll be lots of other things to talk about. So I'll let you guys go. Um, have a wonderful, wonderful day or wonderful evening, wonderful week. I, would, I don't know when you're watching this video or where you're watching it. Uh, but just hope you have a lovely time. Um, I hope you find time to stitch or to work on other crafts and then find time to your, for yourself. Uh, and I hope that you will come back next time. If you're not subscribe, subscribing yet, uh, then please consider subscribing. Um, and, uh, you know, press that big red button um, below. And also, it would be great if you could leave me a comment um, uh, or, or just just um, give me a thumbs up just, just to help me out in my channel. Um, I forgot to mention, if you are commenting for a giveaway, just don't say giveaway or don't say winner, anything like that in the comments just because there are bots um, that are kind of looking for this sort of stuff and I'd really like for someone who's actually watching this video to win. Um, and yeah, that's it really. So thank you so much guys. I really hope to see you next time. Um, yeah, <laughs> happy stitching time. <laughs> okay, <laughs> see you next time. Bye bye.